Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and I'm joined by Roy Taylor, who is the Corporate Vice President of Content Alliances and VR at AMD. Roy, how's it going? Fantastic. Before getting into that though, all of this coverage from GDC 2016 is brought to you by Raw Fury's platformer game, Goner, which you see on screen now. So why, why is it going so well tonight? Well, we were here for Capstace and this sort of secret event that people were talking about online. What's the deal? You know, what were you on stage talking about? Well, the deal is we wanted to, uh, to host the uh, GDC's largest ever event, uh, and we wanted to surprise people. You know, for, I think for people are starting to get a sense that AMD's are coming back, that we're doing some new and original stuff. And so we wanted to package all of that up in one go and share with people just how much we're doing. Um, we had so many people want to come today. Uh, you know, we, we could have had a much larger uh, uh, venue, but it was hard to do. Um, so we're really excited. The energy here is just amazing. There's so many people here. We had so many guest speakers, and there's just so much really cool stuff going on. So, man, yeah, I'm just really fantastic. <laughs> so some of the guest speakers talked about DX12, which is obviously big. You had a lot of yes. VR. And then we've got a new, there's the Radeon Pro Duo uh -huh. that we can talk about as well. Let's start with DX12. Yeah. So one of the big things here was DX12. Some of the developers on stage were talking about that. And what's sort of the the thing for AMD in terms of, you've seen all this asynchronous compute stuff going on, and some of our viewers why have we, asked. Why are we being so successful? <laughs> well, I, your words, not mine. Some of our viewers have asked why the numbers look they, the way they do in the gaming benchmarks with Ashes and other games. Yeah. Well, it's not my words, it's data. I mean, facts. I mean, you can't argue with facts. Sure. And the facts are that so far, you know, we're showing a, sh a, a very clear lead. So right. it's not your word or my word, it's <laughs> data, guys. Um, the reason is, is uh, we were very fortunate. One of our GPU architects, or actually um, one of our most important GPU architects, is a very nice man called Mike Mantor. And Mike had the very far-sighted vision to see that at some point in the future, we will want to use the GPU to do different things at the same time. And unless you do something different, then what happens is, as those different things get queued up, then you end up with kind of traffic jam, just to keep it simple. And so if you could effectively put a traffic cop onto the chip, then you would find a way to do different things at the same time without collisions. And that's asynchronous compute. And so we have on our chip real gates hardware. This is not something you can fix with drivers. And so those gates, the hardware that we have on our chip, gives us a massive advantage in, uh, in DirectX 12 and also Vulkan. So you're going to see similar things, similar results in Vulkan as well. Right, and one of the things sort of to mention, we talked to Chris Roberts from the Star Citizen team, of course, and something he brought up was with DirectX 12, it's still sort of somewhat a waiting game because the developers have to actually do some work at the ground level to get it working. Can you give any kind of overview? What is it that developers have to keep in mind when building for these new APIs? Well, DirectX 12 uh, is very, very powerful. I mean, you can use a little part of it, but for best effect, you've got to use all of it. And it does require a little bit of a fresh, fresh approach, and it does require some work. And that's kind of the bad news. The good news is, when you put the work in, the, the jump in performance is so dramatic, and it's such a great API that you can do things you maybe you couldn't have done otherwise. Of course, if you are far along in your DirectX 11 development and then you're going to kind of swap over, that's going to create some challenges. The exciting thing, the thing that has me as a gamer, and I game a lot, I mean, I've done about 700 hours in Battlefield 4, the exciting thing is, is what's going to happen with people that are taking advantage of DirectX 12 from the ground up. Then we're, and, and then we're really going to see some cool stuff. Do you have any sort of visibility or uh, perception of the timeline for DX12 as these games start fully integrating? Obviously, this has been a really big year for DX12 so far, and we've just gotten started. But what sort of the, how far should people be looking forward to for proper full DX12 integration? Well, well I think it's here. I mean, I do. I mean, you know, you just saw Ashes. Um, you just saw Hitman. We announced here at the event at Cape Say Sin um, that uh, Creative Assembly are going to launch uh, Warhammer Total War in DirectX 12. You, know, you don't have to wait. I mean, make your, make your purchasing decision now based on, <laughs> or your upgrade, based on DirectX 12 right now because it's here. Let's move on to VR. So like we were saying, VR is a big topic here. What was the, the main thing you were talking about on stage with VR today? Uh, yeah, you know, a couple of things I had to deliver. The first is uh, uh, VR is real. Um, for some, I mean, you, you're young. 
I guess most of the audience is young. Um, but for some of, some of us oldies, we remember the VR came out in the 1980s and it came out in the 1990s. So there may be some degree of cynicism. And so that my first message was, don't be cynical. There's so much energy going into VR, so many startups, so much companies, billions of dollars, and really talented people working on it, but they're not gonna just stop working. Um, the other thing I talked about was something really, really interesting, which is, this is a games developer conference, we're here at GDC. But actually there's some people here that are not from the games industry, they're from Hollywood. And what we've seen is, is Hollywood has embraced VR incredibly. We saw the Paranormal Activity VR experience um, from uh, VR Works for working together with uh, Par uh, Paramount Pictures. We've seen Jurassic Park, we've seen the Interstellar VR experience, and actually one of the greatest VR experiences so far is The Martian from 20th Century Fox, uh, which was put together by the VR company. What's really fantastic about this is it's an entire new community. Previously, these companies were doing things like uh, pre-visualization, post-production work, and now they're working on VR. Right. So our community just got bigger. And these are VR experiences of like popular great movies. So it, we've got games and now we've got movies. One of the cool things we saw was the Sulon headset. Yes. With the, uh, it had an AMD, was it an APU, Chris? an APU, yes. So what's, what's in there exactly? Uh, an APU. <laughs> I, I can't say exactly. Like the uh, <laughs> FX8, one of the 8000 series APUs, Prizo, but anyway, yeah. the idea was it was a full system contained in the actual headset. Well, you, that right? you know what? One of the things that people forget, or, or we don't say enough, is that we're powering all of the consoles. You know, we're going to power 83% of all tethered VR this year. So that's a pretty big number. And, and we don't, I think we don't say enough about the fact that we are in the consoles and it is a big deal. So Sulon looked at what we did together um, you know, with Xbox and with Sony and said, well, if they can do that, then they can help us. Right. So we worked together with them, with the APU to put into their headset. Then finally, I want to talk a bit about the Radeon, the new Radeon Pro Duo or Duo Pro. What's correct me on the... Radeon, Radeon Pro Duo. Pro Duo, thank you. So what's the deal with that? We've seen the main gear box. Mm -hmm. what's, uh, what's inside? It uh, has a Radeon Pro Duo, which is uh, two of our high-end uh, Fury GPUs together on a single card. So when you look at it, and I don't know if you filmed it, but you should go film it, it looks like a normal graphics card. Right. And we can do that because of HBM. Because of HBM, we can put those two together uh, in, a re in a regular form factor, so it's not like a, a really, really big card and we can deliver 16 teraflops of performance. Now, Liquid VR supports multi-GPU. In the Valve Aperture test, you can use multi-GPU from AMD with Radeon. Um, and that's important because what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to load into a scene everything a storyteller wants to put into it. So we created this product for two purposes. One, for the VR content creation industry. So people who want to make either experiences using a combination of 360 video and game engines, or just game engines, and two, for power users that just want the very, very best they can get their hands on. So is this card liquid cooled like the previous Fury chips or the Fiji chips? The one that's in the main gear is liquid cooled. Very cool. So any, uh, any final thoughts, closing thoughts here that you'd like to say to people, get them excited about what you're working on? Yeah, you know, drivers. For a long time, people could say, well, AMD has great hardware, what about our drivers? I don't want to hear that anymore, all right? Look, we have world-class drivers, fantastic drivers, drivers that power the Mac, drivers that power airplanes, industrial applications. We have really, really good drivers. And ours were the ones that like, tried to burn people's machines down recently. <laughs> so we have great drivers today, and I'm proud of our driver team. And if you think this new AMD is cool, you ain't seen nothing coming. Very cool. Thank you, Roy. If you like this content, hit the link in the description below for more information. And thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time. Should we cut his hair next time? <laughs> no. <laughs>